Blog Talk Radio. Paranormal Review Radio. Another great show on PRR, Paranormal Review Radio. Lucy, I kind of like that acronym, PRR. I should say it with a radio voice, right? I guess so. Like PRR. <laughs> uh, Anthony, can you just get on with the intro, please? Hello, everyone out there in Paranormal Land. I'm Anthony Agati, broadcasting in New York City. And my co-host, Lucy Liefried, is broadcasting from Chicago. Say hello, Lucy. Hello. Um, welcome, everybody. We have a phone number for you. It is 661-244-9831. And we also have a chat room. So if you've got any questions or anything, you can talk to us either on the phone or you can uh, type something in and let us know through the chat room. We hope you had a safe and fun Halloween. Lucy, did you dress up this year? What was your costume? Yes, I did dress up. And um, how do I put this politically correct? I got dressed up. Well, actually, I got dressed up. Sorry. A little glitch. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean to interrupt your uh, Halloween outfit. Go ahead, Lucy. No, actually, that was pretty cool. Actually, um, I spent some time as a blonde this year. Um, I was uh, trailer trash. <laughs> we got trailer up park work. trash. Yes, yes, yes. I wanted to see what it was like. Um, so that was my costume. Did you get dressed up? And what did you get dressed up? Of course up I did. Of of course, I do. <laughs> Halloween is my favorite holiday. So this year, I dressed up actually as Michael Jackson. But I did a little twist. I threw in a little propofol needles attached to my chest. So it was pretty funny. Um, yeah. But we also actually had a huge snowstorm here. Um, it actually wasn't huge, but it caused so much havoc with like the winds and rain and snow. It was just crazy. And yes, there's snow in October here in New York. Anyway, I want to start off the show by making a statement first. <clears throat> I want to clarify, clarify some things to you guys, to you the listeners out there. We here at Paranormal Review Radio do not profess that we are experts in the field of paranormal. I don't think, and Lucy, you, you can disagree or agree with me, I don't think anyone is an expert in the paranormal field because who can be an expert at something that hasn't really been fully explained? People can be experts in their methods and means, but not in the field. In our case, we bring you information about each topic from the point of view of an average Joe, and we try to open up the lines of communication to start the conversation about the topic, to get you to think, maybe I agree or maybe I disagree, or even to share your stories, and we all can figure it out together. We may not be as polished as some of the bigger radio names out there, but we present information to the hearts and minds of you, the listeners. We hope that you keep that in mind and share it with your friends, your family, your coworkers, your, your dog, whomever. This is your platform to call in and share whatever is on your mind regarding the show's topic. Okay, now that I got that out of the way, Lucy, I want to introduce tonight's topic, which is the world of tarot. Ever wonder how tarot began and by who? Our findings may shock you. Plus, we're going to explain the meanings of tarot cards and discuss tarot card readings and famous readers. And I think that's it, Lucy, right? Are we going to do anything else? Uh, I thought maybe we might do some mini readings, um, maybe. Oh, 
That's right. I forgot all about that. So, Lucy, why don't you start off by explaining what the callers should have ready when they call and what to expect? Okay. Well, basically what I thought maybe we'd do tonight is um, have people call in and, you know, so that we can move it along, we'll just do like one question. And what I will do for you is I'm going to do just a simple three-card spread and we'll take your question and then we'll pull three cards and we'll see what they say. So, That's great. Um, That's great. Actually, like well, I said, well, I'll, let me give you the fo phone number again. I'm sorry. It's 661-244-9831. Great. So we're, we're going to do actually the readings later on. So uh, if you're calling in now and you're waiting to talk to Madame Lucy for your mini tarot reading, um, just get a little comfortable, but stay on the line. Um, if you're having trouble calling in, please redial again. Uh, we're actually not sure how many callers we can keep on hold or how many the limit is. So just keep trying in. Don't worry. We're going to go through these readings really fast. Um, I don't think, Lucy, what, more than five minutes on uh, on a reading? Yeah. It shouldn't take that long at all. Basically, okay. we'll just all right, great. the quest. Okay. All right. So great. So why don't you start us off? Okay, um, basically what I thought that we should start with is that let's start with how tarot cards began. Um, in most people's mind, when you think of tarot card reading, you think of a woman in flowing robes leaning over a small table in a candlelit room foretelling impending doom. Um, but that's not really do you, what do you, tarot Lucy, cards do you have about. your crystal ball with you? Lucy, do no, you have your crystal ball with you? Pen. No, I don't, that's good, that's but I good. do have my candle. <laughs> um, good. So basically, that's not what the tarot cards are about. In fact, they're not even supposed to be telling you your your fortune or your future. Um, according to the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, and we'll get into that a little bit later, the most powerful sources of information come from within. So basically what the tarot cards are, they aid you in coming in contact with one's higher self. So just to, just to expand on that a little bit, what I like to tell people is, is that it's not something that's going to tell you, the, tell you the future. It's not going to tell you if you're going to win the lottery. It's not going to tell you if when, when, when you're going to move into the next realm. But basically, it's just going to tell you things you already know. But it's a different perspective. It's kind of like a different set of eyes on your situation. And that's basically what the cards will do. Um, but what is that? So know? would you what, say, what Lucy, really Lucy, would, I'm sorry, would you say it's sort of like a a, um, uh, a mirror, basically, showing what are, what folks or, or what the actual um, person who's sitting there getting the reading, it's a mirror up to the internal thoughts and wisdom that they already have. It's just showing you basically what you already know. It's just you're denying it yourself subconsciously. Well, maybe not denial. I think a lot of people, they they do know what their situation is. It's just a different view of it. It's like I describe it this way. When I read for somebody, it's almost like opening up their head and I get to look inside and I get to see what's there. And pretty much the cards will tell me, a story, and I just see what the situation is. doesn't tell me what's going to happen because basically you, the person who's being read, you're still in control of your destiny. Um, whatever doors the universe puts in front of you, you still are the one that's going to make that choice, whether you open this door or you open that door. So no matter what the cards say, it's going to tell you what your situation is. It's going to tell you where you're at, but the What's going to happen is totally up to you. You're the one that's going to make the choice. Do I do this or do I not? So hopefully our little three-card reading, if you have a question, it'll just give you like a little bit of a, a road map. Ultimately, you're going to make the decision. So um, I think from that, why don't we just go and start talking about where the tarot cards came from. Um, Anthony, did you want to talk about that or did you want me to go uh, go on about it? 
Uh, I can start it off. Um, actually, the, the history of tarot is so convoluted. Um, if you ever go and search on the web or um, go to a Barnes & Nobles, go to a bookstore, go to a library, and you try and pick out 10 books on tarot, you're going to find that you're going to have 10 different answers for where the the tarot and the tarot cards began, where it started, where where it sort of metamorphosized, by whom, what cultures, what regions of the world. It is just completely um, so obscure that you really can't get the truth about where or how the history of tarot began. Um, I can give you some of the um, inconsistencies and contradictions in history, and I can tell you where some of the stories are leading us to believe, like actually some say that ancient Egypt, which has been the most common professed um, uh, area and, and culture of where tarot cards are said to have began, but it actually is not true. Um, from my findings, I'm finding that it's not true, that it has not come from ancient Egypt. Others have said that uh, it's come from 10th century China. Um, it's even been seen in, in Hebrew, in Islam, in Indian culture, Spanish culture, and in, in Italian sources even. Um, I mean, it's just been all over uh, the world, actually. But what's funny is that the symbols and the meanings that are present or have been present on the cards itself, the pictorials and the numbers and letters and, and all of that on the tarot cards, um, they're sort of mysteriously universal, as though... All of these cultures and all of these um, nations have actually come together and created one form, one universal meaning to tarot cards. And you can relate the cards as you see them today to pretty much every nation, every country in the world. There's, there's, the, the method of tarot cards has become so universal. Um, the name tarot actually is also obscure in its origin. Um, when you talk about Egyptians, they say that actually the the word tarot came from um, their words, taro, which means the royal road. Um, India has said that it actually uh, derived from two of their words, taru, which means cards in India, and tara, which is the Hindu goddess, which is the name of the Hindu goddess. And Italians actually have said that it actually came from or originated from the river in Italy called Tarot. Um, so, again, you, you have many cultures claiming stake on Tarot and even the name itself. But what people fail to understand and still today is that Tarot cards were first developed as a card game. And it wasn't meant for future telling or fortune telling or divination. It, it uh, it was actually just a regular card game, a 56 card game, 56 count card game. Um, let's see, what do I want to get into? Do you want, actually, Lucy? Do you want to get into um, who were the famous folks in history? The names of folks like Antoine, and I think I'm pronouncing this guy's name right, Atelier or, or Atelier, um, who have sort of put their fingerprints on tarot and folks that have come before them and even after them. Do you have any information on that? Yeah, well, um, I let's see, back in 1781, there is a gentleman named Antoine Court de Gel Gelbin, and he published a nine-volume book, which was called Le Monde Primitif. And he actually claimed that the tarot cards contained the secrets of the Egyptians. Um, he really didn't have any basis. He didn't have any proof. But he said that the uh, tarot cards were based on the Book of the Dead, uh, the, uh, the Book of Thoth, which later on in history um, there is another gentleman named Alice, uh, Alistair Crowley who kind of took that idea and kind of made took it further. Um, Mr. Antoine pretty much took the imagery. He kind of based everything on the Egyptians. Um, he used, and I'm looking at my notes here, please bear with me, the tarot, he used it, oh, God. Didn't they bring it from, uh, I think, out of 
out of the idea that tarot cards were of an occult and brought it into more of a mystical feeling? Well, yeah, that's when he was talking about it being with the Book of the Dead, a lot of other people, the occultists, they kind of grabbed onto that idea, and the idea kind of stayed with it that it was mystical and it was fortune-telling because up until that point it basically was a card game. Um, but once he published this book, he it pretty much changed the whole perception of the cards. They went from being a card game to mystical fortune-telling cards. Um, he was very big into the Egyptian hieroglyphics. He used he used the, the hieroglyphics and all these ideas, and he uh, added the, the mysticism to it. Now, the tarot cards hadn't really been used for fortune-telling before this, Um in Italy in the 1700s, they were used. There was another person called Aliette, who was a French occultist, and he worked as a seer and a card card uh, reader. And that was shortly before the French Revolution. Um, Aleister Crowley, again, he... At one point, Aleister Crowley w was described as the most wickedest man in the world. And basically, he pretty much took the whole Egyptian idea and he kind of moved it up to a different level. He said that he was a mystic. He said that he was a seer. He pretty much made the tarot cards his own. In fact, there's a deck that is called the Thought Deck. And Personally, I've used this deck, and it is, like, probably one of the most vivid and beautiful decks that I've ever seen. But the imagery that's in it is all basically a lot of Egyptian. When you go through different cards, um, the deck, the other deck that, that Michel Antoine used had the Terre de Marseille. They have different – the images are a little bit more different. It's a little bit more peaceful. But uh, Crowley, Crowley was based very heavily in the Egyptian, in the Egyptian uh uh, symbolism. Um, I'm trying to see. In what about the infamous Arthur? Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, no. In 1540, there was a book that was called The Oracles of Francisco Marcolini dal Forli, and it shows a simple method of reading reading cards with a regular deck of playing cards. Then there are manuscripts that they found in 1735 and 1750 that also show um, how to read cards that have meanings for the uh, different cards. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see who else. How about the infamous Arthur Edward Waite? Oh. <laughs> Arthur Waite was an English, he was an English Christ, Christian occult philosopher. And he was a member of the Order of the Golden Dawn. He decided to leave the Order of the Golden Dawn, and he founded his own school of mystical thought. He worked with an artist named Pamela Coleman Smith, and she was also a member of this Order of the Golden Dawn. And he created a deck which featured images and scenery on all the cards, the minor as well as major arcana, they actually produced the first 78-card deck that actually is still in use today. Um, a lot of the imagery, again, came from different, like you mentioned before, different religions and stuff. There was a lot from the Kabbalah. There was the Egyptian. Um, they used Western philosophies of the mysteries, but... The Rider Waite deck is probably the most well-known deck that is in use, and it's probably the deck that everybody starts with. Um, the images are supposed to be easier to remember. Personally, I used the Rider Waite deck when I first started reading, but I kind of find the images kind of harsh. I, I, I think they're 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 kind of mean. And when you have a person who's not really sure you know, and they're getting the cards read. Sometimes it has a tendency to scare them. But it is probably the most popular deck that's 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 in use, and it's still being used today. 
Um, let's see. I'm trying to see who else do we have. That's basically, those are like the big names. I mean, there's so many decks. There's so many decks that have come along through the years. I mean, the Terra de Marseille is probably the granddaddy of them all, and that originated, of course, in the town of Marseille in France, and that actually was a center where card, cards were made, and, and basically the cards were for card games. But at one point when, I believe it was Monsieur Antoine, was the one that developed the pictures that are on there. And it became, the deck that he developed was known as the Tour de Marseille. And that deck is probably, next to the Rider Waite, is probably the next most used deck. It's it's a very, I want to call it like almost an advanced deck because the images are pretty similar. So when you're reading with that deck, a lot of times you do rely on your instincts. You rely on the feeling. And we'll get into that more later about actually how it works when you read. Um, I can only speak for myself, but I know it's not easy. It's not always easy to describe, but it is, it is something that I think we really do need to touch on so that you understand what happens during a reading. So I think, um, I don't know, Anthony, do you want to describe what the tarot card deck is like? Well, bef before I get into that, I wanted to touch on um, just a couple of interesting facts. Um, you know, you're talking and I'm talking about tarot and um, really explaining all of these interesting facts and how great the art is and how so many folks have sort of had their hands in it, but it, it actually has had a hard past. Tarot, hist tarot card history um, was not very easy at all, and I'm actually surprised that it's even lasted this long up until present day. Um, I can give you a few dates, and it, it it was never sort of accepted above ground. It was always first initiated underground, and um, from my readings that I've that I've read, um, I've noticed that, or there have been claims that some tarot card pictorials um, were actually created to sort of put forward a, a, a story, and uh, a story that wasn't supposed to be said out loud. And it's sort of sort of like what the Bible is. You know, you read the stories, you're not supposed to read it literally, um, but sort of get the meaning behind it. And I think you can apply that towards the tarot cards. The tarot cards were first, from my readings again, were first initiated as sort of storytelling, and with, with the illustrations that were on them. And the art itself was actually supposed to tell a story, and there have been so many different card decks out there that um, that have had these pictorial stories in them, and the the one famous story actually um, that actually just came out recently was in 2003, and I know everybody knows this, The Da Vinci Code. And The Da Vinci Code, the movie itself, um, was not really or was not truthful to or truthfully based upon the book Da Vinci Code. Um, and within the Da Vinci Code book itself, it talks about um, about 99% of that book is about tarot cards. And the history of the tarot cards itself, or the pictorial history, was about Jesus and Mary Magdalena um, and their story of getting married and having a child, which to the Catholic Church was censored and, and abolished. And so in order to get this story out uh, way back then, they created this pictorial history on tarot cards and tried to get that information out that just as just as the same as the Bible was created is to get the story of God and Jesus out, but not to to um, broadcast the news. And so they created these pictorial histories on the tarot cards. Um, and so obviously the church was not happy with this, but back in the 14th century, in the 1300s and 1400s, the church tried desperately to ban tarot cards all over. The German churches banned tarot cards in 1378. The French churches condemned anyone who um, was ever caught teaching or practicing tarot, and that was in 1381. And in 1423, Italian churches censored anything, anything that was related to tarot and its beliefs, either it be writing or verbal or oral. So it has gone through a 
a, a really horrible life. And it just it, it amazes me that the story and the history and the cards belief and the mysticism itself has lasted this long into actually present day. But one interesting story that I found, or one interesting sort of piece of information that I put together as I was doing this little research, was that when, and we had talked about this earlier, that um, one of the uh, cultures that claimed stake within tarot cards was China. And China had said that they had uh, initiated and gave birth to tarot cards during um, the 10th century, and it was under the emperor's court. And it was at the same time that China had um, invented, or they had claimed they invented, paper and also paper money. And at that time, cards and money were connected, as they are today. Cards and money are connected all the time. And so it's funny, you know, Las Vegas should be thanking China for all of its riches, you know, which prompts the, my question, why isn't there a China-themed casino in Vegas? You know, let's say, I know I'm getting off a little topic here, but, you know, right, I mean, to have they have Luxor, they have the Venetian, why not China? They could call it, like, the Great Wall Resort and Casino. <laughs> I think I should quit. I think I should quit this and start a, uh, a casino out in Vegas. I mean, it, it, it's just funny how back then cards and money were, were connected hand in hand, and how it is today, and how folks are making money off of it in either way. But yet they're condemning tarot cards. Um, so can I add something in ahead. there? Uh, something that sure. you, you you touched on in the beginning. Um, in some schools of thought, in the esoteric school of thought. The tarot cards are actually thought of as a book. And like you said, it is a book, but it's a book that's unbound. And each one of the pages, each one of the leaves, each one of these cards with their symbolism means something. But it's a book that can be read in any different order. So the story can come up differently every single time. So touching on... Well, the, on, user, on the, user is actually the, the, the user is actually the author. Right. Right. The 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 meanings and everything that are in that with those cards actually aren't are, the story is not really within the cards. The story is really within the user. So t touching on what you were saying about being banned by the church and that, um, it, it, with with Mary Magdalene and the Da Vinci Code, it really touches on what is the 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 the, the Gnostic uh, school of thought. Basically, what it is is that the church didn't really they didn't really approve of it because this is something that it, it kind of teaches that knowledge and God is within you. And that was something that the church really didn't didn't want being put forth. And basically what it is, Carol Cards, it is a book and it is a story. But this is a story that's going to change every time you shuffle that deck, every time it's going to change. It's going to change based upon the person who's who's having the cards read. So basically, yes, the story is within you. God is within you. And that's just something that the church at that time, during different periods, just did not want, they were not going to agree with, which leads to, like, the, the cards being banned. So that was something that I found, and I found that was really interesting because it, it just all tied in together. It, the, the history on tarot is is amazing, and we can stay here for hours talking about all the different stories that are, are portrayed in books and online and on videos. Um, but I, I mean, it will confuse you completely. But uh, in some instances, it'll give you some insight, and you, just like tarot, actually will start to put together the story in your own mind. <clears throat> Excuse me and try and put it together that, of what makes sense to you in regards to tarot. So I, I don't know if, Lucy, if you want to continue to talk about history. I mean, again, we can be here forever to talk about it. Was there anything else that you wanted to add before I got into sort of uh, the types of tarot readings? Mm, no, I think, you know, like I said, I think no one really knows the true history, and I think we've touched on a little bit, but I think – for for the listener, like you know, if you're really into it, if you really want to start reading cards, I think part of part of what you need to do in order to learn is to check into the history. Each deck is going to be different. Each deck is going to have a history. Um, where the cards came from, 
yes, that's interesting to learn. But a lot of it, ha- you know, as you pick up decks and as you look at decks, um, it might be beneficial to look into the history of the decks. Like I said, you might pick up a Rider Waite deck and then, you know, just, just go on the Internet, see where it came from. Yeah, again, it'll be the story of, of Edward Waite and Pamela Coleman. If you pick up the Crowley deck, then you're going you're you're gonna go into the history of Aleister Crowley. Um if you pick up the Tierra de Marseille, I mean it, it you're gonna it's gonna take you right back to, to France and it's gonna take you back to Monsieur Antoine. So each deck is going to have a history and those are just three of the decks. There are so many decks out there and each one has a particular history. You take that history, then you take the individual cards and each card has an image and a history of itself. So you can you can, Carol can you can you can study for days you can study for years and you still won't touch everything that's need to be uh, that that is there. I mean it's a fascinating it's amazing to me it is totally fascinating. But I think yeah Anthony if you want to let's talk about the actual deck itself. I mean if you want to get into that. Well, actually, I wanted to get into the types of readings. Um, oh, I'm there sorry. Are, yeah. th- there's actually just <clears throat> excuse me, two different types of readings. There's uh, the question readings and open readings. Um, everybody knows what an open reading is, I, I believe. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's just um, a complete reading from the tarot. Um, and you, Lucy, you can go into more depth about it because you've done this. Um, it, it, it's just an open reading. <clears throat> excuse me, addresses the larger aspects of your life, and and uh, not just a specific problem or a question. It actually will tell you what's going on currently uh, in your life. Go back into the past, and then sort of bring up what it sees in the future for you, or what decisions you may be uh, encountering, and then hopefully give you a guidance into what to expect or what to to move forward. The other set or the other type of reading is question readings. And it's as simple as giving a question to the to the tarot reader. Um it's intended it's not intended actually to answer specific questions like yes or no. And um most say it also shouldn't be used to make decisions, but instead it should be used as a guide to help you make the decision yourself. And I think Lucy you touched on that before. But there are um, sort of five key aspects that I just wanted to get this out there to the listeners. Five key aspects to sort of keep in mind when, um, when actually, when you're going to be here on 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 the air with Lucy, but also when you're going out to other tower readers, um, you should keep these things in mind so that you actually get uh, the most benefit out of a tower reading itself. And the first one is you you should keep your options open. Um, if you already know the answer to your question, um, or whatever you're going to present to the tower reader, if you already know the answer to it, then you're not allowing the cards to actually guide you into into the decision that it should that you should be going into. Um, so make sure that you keep the options open. Ask a question that you are really debating, not that you already know what you're going to do, but you want to find out what else somebody says. You don't want to sort of use the tarot reader as uh, someone to sort of validate what you already know. The second one is find the best level of detail. Basically saying you want to make sure that you give enough information to the tarot reader so that they can, again, so that the tarot cards itself can um, give you that guidance. So you should be focused but not overly detailed. And rather looking at one particular aspect of a problem, find a way to look at it more broadly. Um, but again, don't go too broadly. You want to give some specifics. The third one is focus on yourself. If the reading is for yourself, make sure that your question focuses on you rather than, than someone else who you think may be the root of the problem. The fourth one is stay neutral. Uh, you want to make sure that you stay open to other points of view. Your question has to be neutral and not convey, again, a preconceived notion that your view is necessarily the right one. You want to make sure that you're you're willing to accept whatever answers are given to you, but you ultimately are the one that's actually going to make the decision. No one else is going to make that decision but you, not the tarot card, not the tarot card reader. You are the one that's actually going to make that decision. So make sure that you stay neutral in your position, in your ways when when you're getting a reading. And the last one is, 
be positive. Make sure that your question is stated in a positive way and not in a negative way. You don't want to be in a negative position when you're getting a reading. It will not give you a true reading, or you will not be able to accept what actually is being offered to you. So make sure that you're in a positive and open setting. Uh, that's all that I have on that, Lucy. I don't know if you wanted to add to that. Yeah, I, I kind of do. Um, I agree with what you said, and, and it is like a textbook kind of way about looking at a reading. But in my experience, I've kind of like altered that and pretty much what I do when a person comes to me. And I really enjoy reading for people that really either don't believe or I don't know. And basically, when a, in an open reading, when we're doing like a 10-card spread, which is going to be a general reading and it's going to be uh, all about, uh, you know, what's coming up in your life. As a rule, I don't ask any questions. I, I don't I don't want to know anything about your situation. I don't ask any questions. Basically, what I will do is I will have the person shuffle the cards up. You know, I have them think about their situation, what they want to know. And basically, what I'll do is, you know, after they've shuffled them, after they've cut the cards, so I know that their energy is in those cards, I'll put the cards down. And I will tell you the story that I see. Now, based on that story, I'll tell you everything that's down there. And once I tell you that story, then I'll ask you if you have any questions. So, and and I and one thing I caution people to do because think about if you go to someone and you get your cards read, and you kind of give them information, a person who is not so much on the level, who has any knowledge of kind of like, uh, you know, body language, a little bit of psychology. Uh, they can pretty much deduct exactly what you want to hear, and they can probably tell you exactly what you want to hear, which is not going to be a true reading. So I think in my own experience, and this is only my opinion, I think that for all intents and purposes, when I do a reading, I would prefer that whoever whoever I'm reading for not ask ask me a question. Now, tonight what we're going to do is something a little bit different. Um, I am going to take a question first, and I'm just going to pull the cards, and I'll tell you what it, what's there. And that's your basic little three-card spread, only because we're going to look for something specific. But if you were doing a big general reading, personally, I would rather not have the person ask any questions. Yes, it is important to be positive. It is important to think about what, what you want to have read. Um, and and you have to be open. Uh, you know, I've read for people that, that are total skeptics. And I want to say most of the time I've convinced them. You know, I don't know their situation. I don't know what, what they were going to ask ahead of time. And then, again, too, there's people that will come up to you, and basically the main thing they want to know is, like, you need to know about my love life. Well, you know what? I just pull the cards, and the cards are telling me you need to concentrate on your money. Or there's people that are coming, and they want to, they want to know about their, their job. And basically, the cards are all emotion. You're like, uh, you know, forget about the job. The universe is telling me that you need to concentrate on your relationship. So the story that comes up, like I said, you need to be open. You need to um, be accepting, you know, whatever comes up, be accepting of it. But then again, like Anthony said, you do not take it as this is this is what's going to happen because ultimately, again, and I don't know how many times you can say this over and over, you are in total control of your destiny. All this is is a roadmap. It, it shows you what doors are there. Which door you open is totally up to you. You are in control of the story. How the story ends is up to you. The cards only show you which doors are there. You know, maybe there's only one door. Maybe there's only one path. Or maybe there's going to be a few. But basically, ultimately, the choice of what happens is up to you. It's not it's not fortune telling. It is not going to tell you the future. It's not going to tell you if you're going to win the lottery. It's not going to tell you how many babies you're going to have. It is basically going to give you a map. And I think that's all I have on that. Um, Anthony, what do you want to, what well, do you want to touch on that? Lucy, this leads me actually into something that I want to give to the listeners. Um I want to put you on the spot, and I want to interview you, because I think oh, our great. listeners should know, before getting a reading, who are they getting the reading from? And so I'm going to give you a series of questions. I'll do this sort of like Matt Lauer. Um, and I'm going to interview you. So 
let's go through okay. these pretty quickly. Um, and I promise I won't grill you, okay? Okay. All right. The first question okay. is, how how long have you been reading tarot cards? Over 20 years. Seriously, wow. over 20 years. Well, what attracted you to tarot? How did you get into it? It was completely by accident. Um, I never really, I mean, I've always been into like the occult. I've always read about things, always loved the paranormal, always loved ghosts. But for some reason, I had a friend that I was working with, and she actually bought a deck of tarot cards. And I stood over her shoulder, and I was looking at them, and I was like, oh, this looks really cool, and that looks like that, and that looks like that. She finally turned around, and she said, you know what? If you're that interested, go buy your own deck. So I did. Next. And so you bought it, but that, but how how did you learn tarot? Um, <laughs> you know what? I when I first started reading, I read every single book I could find on the subject. I memorized every single card. I bought every deck I could. I never stopped studying. Um, finally, after doing this for quite a while, I went with a couple friends to a street fair a, here in Chicago, and. There was a gentleman, an older gentleman, who was doing palm readings, and of course, you know, we're 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 like, oh, I've got to get my my palm read. Um, the gentleman, he, my two my two friends, they went first. He gently took their hands and told them what they wanted to hear, you know, about romance, the man they were going to meet. Really nice, really really sweet. And then all of a sudden, it was my turn. And he takes my hand, he looks at it, and he looks at me, looks at my hand again. And instead of giving me the story about how, you know, I was going to meet the man of my dreams, he was going to sweep me off my feet, he looks at me and he says, stop trying to learn everything. You already know what you need to do. And then that was it. And I'm like, okay, wait a minute, where's my reading? You know, I I, I, I was pissed. You know, I, I figured, um, what did it mean? Well, of course, it wasn't until a few days later that it, it, it clicked in my head. He's talking about the tarot cards. Um, what he What he was telling me is I needed to open up my mind. I needed to see. I needed to see what the cards really were telling me. Um, I needed to rely on my instincts. I already had looked at all the books, um, but what he was trying to point out is that there's a certain point where I think every reader relies on the books, relies on the uh, on the uh, the definitions. And as you know, if you're interested in reading tarot cards, you'll learn this that you know you'll look at each card up every time you pull a card. Okay, what does this mean? But, you know, there comes a point where you really have to rely on your instincts. You have to look. You have to see. That story that's in each one of those cards will come through. Um, I personally, I believe anybody can read cards. I think we all have this ability. I think some of us are more in tune to it than others. We all have feelings. We all have hunches. Um, We all, you know, most of us have experienced deja vu. I think we all have this ability, but it's just, um, some of us just tune into it. And again, like I said, I can't tell you the future. I can only tell you everything that you know, you know, and it's not that, you know, it's not a cop-out or anything because when you go back to thinking about like what the Golden Dawn said, it, it, it's a mirror of, of the reader. That's basically what it is. And that's what I believe even before I read those books. It's, it's um, I am telling you what you already know, but it's, it's a different view. It's a different set of eyes on the situation. You might be looking at it from the front. Well, I'm seeing it from the side. And, you know, it, it's just it's just a different perspective. Um, once the cards so, tell me... So what, what, kind of ex, what kind of experience have you had? I mean, is this going to be actually the first time that you're going to do readings on, on the radio, on the air? No, no. Um, back in the 90s in Chicago, I read cards on the air um, on, on on a local radio show. It was on the loop. It was Kevin Matthews was the show, and I, I read cards regularly on there. Um, I've done station events for them. I've done uh, – <laughs> I read at a local bar. I've done – 
I've even done cards at a wedding. I've done corporate events. I read cards at our Christmas party. And, of course, I read for my friends. You know, every, every once in a while someone will say, you know, I need um, card reading. I've actually read for a couple of celebrities. Those were fun. Um, but I, I, I read cards a lot. I mean, it's something that I do. Do you use special decks? Right now I'm using the Golden Tarot. And I love this deck. This was a gift, and it's actually the most beautiful deck I've ever seen. But like I mentioned before, I used to use the uh, Crowley deck. And I like the Crowley deck, like I said, because of the images. Um, if you go on the Internet and you pull it up, the images are beautiful. It is the colors. I mean, it's just when you look at it, you can see a story. Um, some people might find it a little rough, but again, like I said, I used to use the Rider Waite deck. Um, I found the images harsh. I've used the Terra de Marseille, um, the Connolly deck. There's so many. Uh, Cosmic Tarot, I, I used to like that deck. But right now, the, the only deck that I'm using is the Golden Tarot. And I really like this deck because the pictures that are on there are actually taken from um, Renaissance paintings, from medieval religious paintings. It's a very peaceful, it's a very beautiful deck. The symbolism in that, to me, is just more, for my for the period of my life that I'm at, it's it, it's perfect. How how often do you recommend people have readings? It does depend on the situation. Um, I would say once a month is good um, if you're really into it. Once a week might be pushing it because your situation is always changing. Um, everything that happens to you every single day, everything that the universe puts in front of you, um, you don't want to be too dependent on what the cards are saying. I mean, you really do need to take accountability for your own actions. Um, the universe, it just puts things in your path, okay? Everything happens for a reason, and if you come to the, come to a door, ultimately it's up to you whether you're going to open that door or not. The cards are just a, a road map. So November is National um, uh, American Indian um, History Month, and... Lucy, being of Cherokee ancestry, does tarot card reading interfere with any of the Cherokee Indian beliefs? Actually, I have a lot. I have a definite opinion on this one. First off, Native Americans, they do believe in the supernatural. They believe that the supernatural world exists right alongside of the real world. And divination is part of this. There's signs everywhere. There's, you know, every day the earth and the universe, they give off these signs. Um, you don't need to be psychic to read the signs. You just have to open your eyes. Belief in spirits and demons are normal to Native Americans. It's part of the reason why I love to ghost hunt. I mean, it, this is part of my heritage. It's something that I believe in. Um, I've always known that there's another world out there. So basically, tarot cards, there are a tool of divination, and it's basically of the Euro-Anglo race. There's no conflict between the two. I mean, because they're two totally separate things. What Native Americans believe and, and what the tarot card, you know, there's no conflict. Um, I think I look at things a little bit differently than the rest of the world, and I think it's helped me to learn to read the cards. Now, being Catholic has interfered with reading tarot cards more than being Native American, um, I've justified it because, I mean, we all know that, the you know, being Catholic, you know, everything, there's a lot of things that you can't do. And fortune telling is one of them that is looked down upon. But I don't see it as fortune telling. I can't see the future any more than Miss Cleo did. But I can see where someone's at and I can feel things. Um, I just can't see the future. Um, you control the choices that you make. I just give you a roadmap. Oh, well, that's great. That's great, Lucy. Thank you for that. And I hope that uh, sort of helped out our listeners out there that are going to get some mini readings uh, today with with you, Lucy. Uh, I know that, you know, if I'm going for a reading, I want to know who who's actually giving it and a little history of that person just so I know that uh, – where their mindset is at and, and what their beliefs are and um, 
how and when and where they've done uh, this. So I hope that's helped you out there, listeners. Um, Lucy, you think you're ready to give some readings? Sure. Let's try it. Let's okay, great. We... Do, you, do you need to look in the crystal ball or do you need... Do you need to, you know, address your headdress or anything like that? No, 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 no. <laughs> Basically, okay. I just need to hear the person's voice, and then we'll shuffle the cards up. We'll pull three cards, and let's see what comes up. Okay, great. So I'm going to take the first caller. We have a caller from Chicago, area code 773407. Hello, you're on the air. If you'd like, please give your name, your location, and uh, give Lucy your question. Hi, I'm Tanya. I'm in Chicago. Can you hear me? Hi, Tanya. Yeah, yes. I can hear you. Hi. Hi. Uh, well, I don't have a, a – I decided not to phrase it as a question, but rather to ask you to tell me about my future, romantic or otherwise. Okay. Well, like I said before, I, you know, I can't tell you the future, but let's – you want to you wanna talk about romance. So let's, let's pull the cards up. Let's see what happens, okay? Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shuffle them up. And if there's anything in particular or anyone in particular that, you, that you've that you got in mind, why don't you just think about it? You know, think think about the situation and let's see what happens, okay? Okay. Shuffle these suckers up three times. We're going to cut them three times and we're going to pull three cards, okay? And the first one that's coming up, is the three of coins. Next one is the queen of cups. <laughs> um, and the last one is the emperor, and the emperor is reversed. Um, and please forgive me. I have a tendency sometimes when, when cards come up, I might giggle or laugh only because I know what the card means, and, you know, I see something. And basically what it is, it's a three-card spread. And the three-card spread is going to be the first card is going to pertain to the past, the second card is going to pertain to the present, and the last card will pertain to the future. So let's start with your first card. Your first card is the three, three of coins. And the three of coins is um, the textbook definition is creative ability bringing material gain, recognition by an employer, status through accomplishment. Um, it's a card of coins stand for symbolism. So basically in the past, you know, you're pretty well where you need to be, okay, as far as material, as far as money. I mean, it's not that you're overabundant with money, but you know you've got a good grasp on the material things in your life. The present is the Queen of Cups. The Queen of Cups is the woman who is, your emotions are very strong. They're very positive. Um, you sometimes wear them on your sleeve. But emotions are very, very important to you. Near future is the emperor. And this card is reversed, though, okay? Uh, when a card is reversed, a lot of times it is the opposite. Uh, it's kind of like a, uh, the opposite of the way, it, the, way the, the meaning is the other way. So the emperor, the emperor is usually a very, very strong, in control, but this is reversed, so it's almost going to be like, I hate to say this, but almost like a pushover. <laughs> um, if there's somebody in mind that you're looking at, he's going to be a softy. He's going to be someone that is going to, you either need, you either know him or you need to look for somebody who is very, you're not looking for a strong, bowl me over kind of person. It's almost like this person is going to be very, very nice. It's going to be very gentle. And he's probably going to respond very well to the emotions that you have. You have a lot of emotion inside of you. And you need to let those emotions flow. Don't ever, do not, don't ever hold them back. Because the person who you need to be with, he's going to be a really, really nice person. He's not going to be overbearing. He's not going to be... Um, Strong and macho. In fact, if you let him, I mean, if if you want to, he'll let you take the lead. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Interesting. 
<laughs> is it a meta so or I should be looking for him? It's, it's either either he's within your scope, but this is a card of the future, so he's probably nearby, but I don't think you two have hooked up yet. Okay. Yeah, because okay. I can't even think of anybody like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, the most important thing is is that keep don't, don't hide your emotions. Emotions are very you, your emotions are very strong, and and that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And that's what makes you you, and that's what makes you special. This person is going to respond to that. Oh, that's nice. Okay. That hasn't happened. <laughs> That'll be a new experience. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Thanks for the thank reading. Thank you, Tanya. I it. Okay. Thank you, dear. Well, that was okay. good. Anthony, do we have do we have another one? We do. We have another caller. Um, area code three one zero. I believe this is California. Hello, you're on the air. Please give your name, location, and your question for Lucy. Hi, my name is Marissa, and I'm in California. Hi, Marissa. Hi, Marissa. Um, hi. Um, so my question is, um, do I have some big positive things coming in my future? Well, let's see what we got. Okay. I'm going to shuffle the cards up. And let's see what we got here. Okay, we're going to pull three cards. First one's nine of wands. Next one is the hermit, but it's reversed. And actually, two cards came out. I'm going to go with, I'm going to pull all four. Now, the first card, nine of wands. Nine of wands is um, recent past. And the nine of wands is a lot of things, you know, thinking. Mind's always going. Um a lot of things, uh, different ideas. I mean, there's so much that you want to do, and there's so much on your, on your mind. You know, it, it, it's it's good. I mean, it, it's a good way to be, but sometimes it it can be tiring. Sometimes it can be a bit too much. The next card is the Hermit, but it's reversed. Okay, so you're very outgoing. Um, it's time to take the, all of those ideas, and it's just kind of like let the world know what's there. Um, the extra card that came up was the Eight of Coins, and it was reversed. Okay, the Eight of Coins, when it's when it's right side up, is when you take all the things that you've learned and you're ready to put them to work. Well, this is reversed. Okay, there's still a lot for you to learn. Okay, you're still in your learning phase. You're still um, you haven't mastered exactly what you want to do, but you know, you're you're the kind of person that is not going to, you're not going to stay quiet about it. It's like whatever you need to do, and the last card is the Ace of Swords, um, you're going to do it. Um, whatever you ultimately decide that you want to do, because there's a, there's a few things. I mean, there, there's a few things in there that you can choose from. Whatever you ultimately decide, you're going to make them happen. I mean, you are, the Ace of Swords is, the beginning of something really good. It's the beginning of making things happen. It's taking the things that you've learned. It's taking the hermit card. And it's, instead of retreating into yourself, it's like being out there. So you, from this, what I'm saying is that there's a lot of things that you want to do. Ultimately, you still need to learn. You still need to continue. Like if it's Whether it's education, whether it's apprenticeship, whatever it is, you still need to to um, master it, but once you master it, there's not going to be any stopping you. So whatever you put your mind to it, you got it. That's good. I like that. <laughs> That's an awesome I like reading. I, I like that one. I really do like that I one. really awesome. like that reading. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. I, I'm glad you liked it. Thank you so much for calling. Thank you. Bye-bye. That was nice. Great. That was that was a good reading. <laughs> and you got another like one. She's got, 
she it sounds like she's got the, the the world in her hands. Well, it's not quite yet. She's still learning, but once she does, there's not going to be a stopping her. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me just reiterate the phone number. The phone number is six six one two four four nine eight three one six six one two four four nine eight three one. The lines are open, so if there's anybody out there that wants to call in and talk to Lucy and get a mini reading. Uh, if you've got a question on your mind, if you've got to make a decision on something, if you are unsure about what to do in your work life, in your home life, in your love life, uh, in any aspect of your life that you want to get an answer to or, or guidance to, um, give us a call. Give us a call here and talk to Lucy. She's done a couple of readings so far, which I thought were really exciting and really good. And so uh, this is your chance to, to call in and and talk to Lucy. So um, while we're waiting for callers to call in, um, are there any cards in the deck, Lucy, that um, you find interesting or maybe that you find that come up maybe even the most when you do readings? No, they all come up. It's hard to say. A lot of times it depends. It depends on the person. It depends on... Um, you know, you might have someone who's really in a, I hate to say it, like a negative state of mind. So you're going to get a lot of swords. Swords are usually the the, the cards that are, I want to say, the most negative. I mean, there are negative cards in each suit, but there's, mm. there's truly no real negative card. I mean, there's always a positive side to it, but it depends on the reading. I mean, there might be a reading where someone's totally amazingly in love and they'll have nothing but cups or there might be someone who's really worried about things or has a lot on their mind it's going to be all wands um a lot of times it could be the major arcana cards you know which means that it's a really really strong issue um what like what you're saying like cards that i find interesting I find the death card extremely interesting. I know it really? scares a lot of people, yeah. But death is, again, stealing a little bit from my Native American beliefs, death is only the end of one cycle, and it moves to another. Basically, the death card, when it comes up, it doesn't mean you're going to drop dead. A lot of times what it means, it means the ending of one cycle and the beginning of a new one. Um, another card that I find interesting is the devil card. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes people freak out when they see the devil card. But the devil card is basically a card of materialism. It is a card of um, unrestricted passion. So a lot of times the cards, they depend on the other cards around them. An individual card coming up doesn't always mean the same for everybody. A lot of times it does depend on the other cards that come up that are around them. Well, we've got a caller. Um, we've got area code 312, I believe that's Chicago. Hello, you're on on the air with Paranormal Review Radio. Please state your name, your location, and your question for Lucy. Okay, I am in Chicago. And my question is... Um, I didn't catch your oh, name yeah, my, there. I'm sorry, my name is Ola. My question is, um, you know, I'm going to a little bit of a... Hi, Lucy. I'm a little bit of a control freak, and I am presented with a position of do I need to kind of, in a situ in a relationship, do I need to let the person go through what they need to let go, or do I need to try to just pursue the situation? I don't know what to do. So you're trying to see if you need to... Let's see what the cards say. If you need to pursue this situation or if you just need to sit tight. Is that what you're looking for? Yes. Okay. Let's shuffle these up. Let's see what we got. Let's pull three cards. First card is the Hierophant. Next card is the Emperor. The last card is the Page of Wands. First card. Um, basis of everything... This person is a person that wants to do things that are right. He does not want to he doesn't want to get over on anybody. Basically what he wants, he wants everything to be right. He wants everything to be good. He wants everything to be pure. Okay? What's 
the next card is the emperor, and that's the present. Um, whatever is whatever is in play right now, he wants to control it. He wants to take care of this, um, and he wants to be the deciding factor in this. Near future is the page of wands, and the page of wands is. New uh, new ideas, new beginnings, but a softer, uh, uh, like a very um, nice, calm way of thinking of things. So looking at this, honestly, you got a person here who really wants everything to be right and good. But whatever's crossing him right now, he wants to take care of it himself. Once he gets over this, everything's going to be fine. So in, in answer to your question, you need to sit tight. You really need to sit tight because according to this, the second card, and that's the present, whatever this person is, is either dealing with or going through, I think they want to solve it, solve it themselves. They're very determined that they are going to fix this. So I don't think, I honestly, looking at these cards, I don't think that he they, they would be receptive to, you know, you trying to help. But once this is over, it's going to be nice. It's going to be very nice. Uh, you know, he has definite ideas, and they're they're nice. They're really nice. So um, it might be difficult, but you need to sit tight for a little bit. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you for calling. Thank you, Ola. Good night. Okay. Uh, we've got. <laughs> Do you need a little breather? We've got a couple of callers on the line. No, 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 let's keep them coming. You're okay? I love doing okay. this. We, I, I, <laughs> I see that. I, I hear you're in your zone over there, huh? <laughs> I truly do. I mean, I don't know if I can explain this to people, but it's like this is something that I really, really do enjoy doing. I mean, when I read cards, I don't see anything else. I don't hear anything else. It's just like me, the cards, and the other person. Oh, good. Good. All right, so let's take a caller. Uh, our next caller is area code 347. It's Queens, New York. You're on the line. Please give us your name, your location, and your question for Lucy. Yes, hi. My name is Rock Home from New York. Um, trying to find hi, out. Hi, Rocco. How, how you doing? Um, trying to how find out. You? Yeah, we're trying to trying to figure out uh, how my family is going to be in the future, uh, help-wise, and uh, if we're going to extend it. So you just want to see how life is going to be, huh? Basically, let's yeah. Shuffle them up, and let's see what happens. I wish you guys could see this deck. This deck is beautiful. You can do it. Right. Okay, we're going to pull three cards. First card we pull is Knight of Cups. <laughs> the next card is the Devil. <laughs> and then the last card is Temperance. <laughs> okay, the first card, the Knight of Cups. Okay, um, you have a lot of love in your heart. You have a lot of emotion, and there's a lot of love inside your heart. It's very important to you. Your family is very important to you. Now, the next card is the devil, but it's reversed, okay? So all the things I was talking about, materialism, um, you know, excesses, those aren't important to you. What's, it's not important. The, the material things aren't important to you. What's important to you is the emotion. It, what's important to you is your family. Um, the last card is temperance, and temperance is everything the way it should be. Um, as long as, I'm going to say, as long as material things don't become an issue, I think everything is, is perfect. Everything should be fine. But that's coming from your perspective. I mean, like I said, it's not the material things that are important. What's important to you is the emotional well-being of your family. And the the last card is everything the way it should be. Everything is in a calm, nice manner. So I think things are things are great. I think things are going to be fine. Well, that sounds great. I mean, that's that's awesome. 
that I, I, it, it's 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 a very sweet reading. It's a very nice reading. Like I said, um, but I see here I, you have a lot of love in your heart for your family, and everything should be fine. Everything looks good. I don't see anything that would be a negative here. Okay. That's great. I had to awesome. Thank you so much, Lucy and Anthony, too. Thank you, you guys are the sure. best. Thank you, Thank Rocco. Thank you so much for calling. No problem. Okay. Well, that was nice. That was nice and sweet. I like that one. <laughs> we have area code 917. I believe that's New York. Hello, you're on the air. Please state your name, your location, and your question for Lucy. Okay. Hello, Hi, Paula. my name is Lena. Hi, hello. Hello. Hi. Hello, can you hear me? <laughs> Hi, yeah. please, please lower down your computer. <laughs> you're listening to yourself. <laughs> Okay, how's that? Is that better? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry about that. Hold on. So I have a question. Um, okay, who, who okay. is this? Hi, it's Nina. I'm calling from Queen, New York. Hi, Nina. <laughs> What's How your question here? I'm so fine. How are you? Um, I'm, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you. Um, I have a question about romance. About romance? Is, yes, that's very general. I, that, am I ever going to see it in my life again? <laughs> <It's laughs> I'm the corner. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're going to shuffle this. We're going to cut them. We're going to pull three cards. Let's see what we got. First card is justice. Next card, the page of wands. And the last card is the ten of coins. Okay, first card, justice. Um, everything needs... It, it, it's important to you that everything is good and on the level. Okay, you look for a person that is going to be truthful, someone that's going to be fair. Um, what's across you right now, though, is the Page of Wands, and it's reversed. Um, you need to, how do I put this? You need to maybe lighten the standards up a little bit. You've got a set idea in your head of what you're looking for, and sometimes when we look for something that's textbook perfect, it doesn't happen, only because there isn't anybody who's textbook perfect. Everybody has flaws. Everybody's got faults. Um, so you just kind of need to rearrange the criteria, what you're looking for. Um, what's ahead of you is the Ten of Coins. And the Ten of Coins is it's success. It's, it's, it's emotional wealth. So, yeah, I'm going to say romance is, romance is in your future, but you need to kind of, like, change the criteria. I think if you leave your standards way, you know, if you're looking for the perfect person, that perfect person doesn't exist. And everybody has faults and flaws. So, you know, sometimes the flaws are the things that will draw you in. So I think it's just kind of looking at things a little bit different. But I definitely see it coming. I just don't know when. <laughs> But I, I do, like I said, it's just um, you just need to, to to look at it a little bit differently. And I think once you do that, I think it might be very obvious or it just might, it'll happen sooner than you realize. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Great. Thank you, Nina. Thanks, Nina. Okay. We have another caller on the line. We have area code 630. I believe that's in Illinois. Hello, you're on the air. Please state your name, your location, and your question for Lucy. Hi, this is Kelly, and yes, I am in Illinois. Um, my question Kelly. is with the... 
Hi, Lucy. With the holidays upon us, I am having a lot of struggles as far as spending time with family or just kind of doing my own thing, and so wanted to see what the cards say. Okay. Let's see. We're looking for some time management here. Let's see what we got. Let's pull three cards. First card is Queen of Swords. She's reversed. Next card is the Four of Wands. And the last card is Judgment. Um, yeah, it, it, uh, Queen of Swords, she's reversed. Um, things always... Ha- it's been very hard to do what you want to do. Um, it's been frustrating almost. Um, but that's in the past. Okay, what... The next card, the Four of Wands. The Four of Wands is a very nice, it's a very, um, it's a happy card. And basically, yes, you can pull it all together. You can juggle everything. You can you can be here in the morning and be here in the afternoon and still get the shopping done. Um, but the last card is judgment. It's just that you're going to have to divide your time equally. Um, it, you know, it, it's going to take a little bit of, um, how do I put this? You need to just make sure that everybody gets time. It's being fair with your time. It's not, you know, even though you really, really would rather spend the whole day doing this, you're going to have to divide that day up into two if you've got several other things that need to do. If if shopping is on one end and visiting families on another, you're going to have to divide the time equally. Um, but What's crossing? I mean, you know, like I said, what's crossing you with the thing in the middle is it's it's going to be fine. You know, as long as you consciously decide that I'm going to divide my time equally among everything and everybody I need to do it, it's going to be a wonderful holiday. So the middle card is the present, and then the last card that you talk about is like the future. Yeah, kind of like the future, and like I said, it's everything being fair. And, you know, in addition, not only with you being fair in your time, in in turn, everybody will most likely be fair with you. Everything should be the way it should be. There are There should be no big surprises coming. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you very it's much. It's been frustrating. I mean, that first card, that first card does show that it's been frustrating. It's been hard to do mm-hmm. everything that you want to do. I mean, it really has. It's a very but busy you know year. <laughs> it's going to be a good holiday. Like I said, it's, just, it's going to take a little pen and paper and a little bit of planning and a little bit of creative, um, you know, uh, dividing that day up. But it's going to happen, and it's going to be a nice holiday for you. Okay? Thank you so much. You have a good holiday. You're welcome. You too. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. That was great. Lucy, does it get tiring going from one reading to another, or do you find yourself sort of re-energized each and every time? No, not at all. I mean, it doesn't. I have read, oh, God. Um, Okay, the the last Christmas party, well, no, I'm going to go back even further than that. When I was doing stuff at the radio station, we did, um, out at the Willowbrook Ballroom, which is haunted, by the way, um, Kevin Matthews did what he called a prom. And what I did, I read tarot cards that evening. And I remember I got there, I want to say about maybe about 6 in the evening, and I read cards straight through. It was past midnight. And because it, it just people kept coming. And it was, it was funny because um, my son and his girlfriend at the time were there, and they were kids, they kept bringing me, you know, like something to drink, and I was like, but it was just so much fun. I mean, I enjoy doing this so much that it really doesn't... I mean, once I actually stop, then I'll be exhausted. But at the time while I'm doing it, no, it's not tiring. It's something that I really love to do. It's like a tarot of adrenaline. They should bottle that, right? <laughs> I wish. 
We, we have another caller on the line, uh, area code 718. I believe that is Queens, New York. Hello, you're on the air. Please state your name, your location, and your question for Lucy. Hi, everybody. My name is Joanne. I'm from Queens, New York. I just have a general question. Um, Lucy, would I ever be able to, like, sit back and be happy and enjoy life? I'm always on the go. I'm always worrying. I'm always rushing to do things. Am I ever just going to sit down and just stop with everything? No, oh, let's see. And first off, hi, Joanne. Hello. I didn't get a chance to say hello. Okay, let's shuffle this up and let's see. Pull three cards. First one, page of wands. That card came up a lot tonight. Second card, ten of cups. And the last card, page of swords. Um, first card is the page of wands. And like I said, it is you have like definite ideas about what you want. They're 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 there. They're nice. You haven't gone through with the ideas. It's like the beginning of something. You you in the past, it's like I've thought of these things. I want to do these things. But like you said, it's almost like I don't have enough time. You know, I haven't had enough time to do these. Um, what's crossing you is the Ten of Cups. And this is reversed, okay? The Ten of Cups is, is a beautiful card. It's emotional happiness. But for you, it's reversed. It's still a good card, and it's still emotional happiness. But like you said, it's tinged with a little bit of, like, it could be a little bit better. So it's almost like right now, Sure, things are happy, and you are happy, but it's almost like there's just, you know, could could it, could it get a little bit better? The last card, the card for the future, is the Page of Swords, and it's reversed, okay? The Page of Swords, when it's the right side up, is when I'm going to do this, and I'm definitely going to make this happen. Well, this is reversed, and basically what the universe is telling you, it's okay to relax. It's okay just to to... to Ease up, and especially on yourself. I think once you ease up on yourself and just take the extra couple seconds to breathe, that middle card is going to go totally all the way around. It's a good card. It's an emotional card. It's There is emotional happiness there, but it's just tinged with a little bit like, I can do better. I can do more. And the last card is telling me, yeah, you can, but you just need to relax. You need You, you need to go easier on yourself. You push yourself too hard. All you got to do is relax, and everything will fall into place. Great, great. But that's you just need to breathe. (laughs) All you do, really, it's true. I mean, all you need to do is just breathe. Just, just take a couple seconds and just, just, just let it, just, just breathe. That's all you need to do, and it'll, it'll start falling into place. Don't push yourself so hard. Okay. All right. Well, that's great. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Joanne. That was great. So, Lucy. Yes. You still there? Yeah. Have uh, have you ever had a have, have you ever had to give a bad reading? <laughs> um there are no bad readings. Even with the negative cards that come up, um, there's always a positive. If something comes up that that I feel that is a negative, there's always another side to it. So if, it, how do I explain this? It's kind of like, um, let's say if someone, there's maybe like a medical problem or something. Um, usually the person may know about it already, and it's just a matter of just reinforcing that they know they need to take care of uh, they take care of themselves um money wise you know when things are bad i mean sometimes you'll see it but you'll also see uh the universe everything happens for a reason so if there is a negative like to do with maybe money job whatever there's always an alternative there's always like maybe a path that okay well my situation's not so good, maybe I need to do this. Or maybe it'll show a door that 
they need to take or a path they need to take. Um, there's there's never a negative because every time you see a negative, there's always going to be a different side to it. There's a way out. Uh, the universe doesn't put things in that there are no that there's no way out. There's always a way out. There's always a way around it. There's always a way to fix it. And so that's what I'm saying. I don't honestly see. I've never seen a really bad reading. I've seen sad ones. You know where when I put the cards down. I mean I just get the, the the most unbelievable sadness. But even then, you know, the, there's there's a way around it. There's a way to alleviate it. But I've seen sad. I've seen sad. I've seen um, I've seen a lot of worry. But then again, I've seen some really really good ones where, you know, just looking at the cards, I'll start giggling. You know, I, I have friends that I read for, and they hate when I do that. But I can't help it, you know. I'll put the cards down, and it's just such an awesome reading that it makes me happy just from the moment I put the cards down. So it goes both ways, you know. There's there's really not there's really not negatives, but there's a whole lot of good ones. Well, but I want to ask you another question, but first I want to give out the phone number again because the lines are open. Area code six six one two four four nine eight three one. If you want to talk to Lucy and get a mini reading. She's actually been doing great so far tonight. Uh, the area code is 661-244-9831. But my question to you, Lucy, is has anyone come back to you after you've done a reading and told you that they've taken the advice and it's either worked out really well or worked out poorly? Has anything like that ever happened? <laughs> Almost every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, most of the time, most of the time, it's good. Most of the time, it's like, oh, you hit it right on the money. Oh, you were right about that. Um, I haven't really run into too many people that have come. I don't think I've ever had anybody come back and say, no, you were. Oh, you're totally wrong. I mean, I've had I've had skeptics. You know, someone that doesn't believe, and you know, they'll be like, oh, okay, you know, that that doesn't pertain. Well, you know, if it doesn't pertain to you, then it doesn't pertain to you. But that co- that goes back with something that we talked about way in the beginning. You need to be open to it, and if you're not open to it, you're not going to get you're not going to get good info. So if you kind of like you know block that little window in your head, no one's going to get in. You know, it, it may be that they didn't want they didn't really want to know anyway. But I really I I don't think I ever remember anyone ever. In, in in the over 20 years that I've been doing this, in about the 20 years I've done this, I don't think I've ever had anyone come back and say, you know, that was really bad. You were totally yeah. wrong. I've never had anybody do that. Well, we've got another caller, if you're ready, Lucy. Uh, yeah. We've got area code 937. I believe that is Ohio. Hello, you are on the air. Please state your name, your location, and your question for Lucy. Hi, my name is Sandy, and you're right, I'm from Ohio, Troy, Ohio. Hi, Sandy. Hi. Well, glad, just excited about you taking my call. I am just wondering (laughs) what you see for a relationship coming up for me. Okay, let's see. Let's see what the cards say. Okay, let's pull three cards. Let's go. First one is the Ace of Cups. Next one is the Two of Swords. And the third one is Justice. And they're all reverse. Okay? The Ace of Cups in the past. Um, It's almost like you gave up on it sometimes. It's almost like... um, The Ace of Cups, when it's right side up, it's the beginning of something new and 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 wonderful. But when it's reversed, mm-hmm. it's almost like the ending. It's almost like maybe you've had a relationship or relationships in the past that just haven't worked out and they they've they've ended. And it's almost like maybe closing that door. Okay? Mm-hmm. The next part is the two of swords, but it's reversed. Okay? The the two of swords when it's right side up, it's just being being very um protective. It, it, it's protecting yourself. It's protecting your stance. 
Well, that stance is kind of it's kind of wavering. You're 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 loosening up a little bit. It, it 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 is time. You're very ready for a relationship. You've you've had that that wall up, but the wall's starting to come down. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The near future is justice, but it's reversed. Okay. Um, it's almost like you want to be fair about this, but then again, it's almost like you know what? I'm going to make it happen. But the three cards that you've got, um, I know where you're coming from has been difficult. I know where you're at right now is is still, you know, it's still difficult, but it's almost like the walls are starting to come down. You're starting to you're starting to become more um, open to it. But what I need to tell you in the future, what I'm seeing here is almost like you need to let it happen. Okay, when you look for something very, very strongly, sometimes you miss it. And if you just let the wall keep coming down, you're on the right path. You're letting that wall come down, but you need to let it come down all the way. You need to become open again. And once you become open again, then it will happen. But while you're still holding those swords, while you're still holding that little bit of the wall up, you may miss what's out there. So what my advice to you from these cards, what I'm saying is I can't tell you if it's really going to happen or not. Like I said, I don't tell the future. But I can tell you that in order to make it happen, you need to relax the wall a little bit. I mean, you've been you've been in a protective stance for a long time. And it, it sometimes it's a little difficult. You know, you sometimes you have to pinch yourself and say, "Okay, wait a minute. I need I need to be more open." And basically, that's what the universe is telling you. You need to be a little bit more open. And once you're open, it's going to happen. Okay. Yes. Boy, that got me. So, <laughs> yes. I I know I've had the wall up. I know I. It was just like, no, I don't want nothing else. I'm done. It's over with, and now I'm just starting to get my, I'm getting myself ready, uh, my house ready, just everything, you know, cleaning out mm-hmm. and preparing myself for the future, and I am ready for a new relationship, and I'm ready for the love to come in and just sweep me off my feet now. It will, but like I said, you just have to pull that wall, or, you know, let let the wall fall down. Once the wall falls falls down, then you know what? You wanna let that you wanna let that other person come in. Right now, you know, the person that, that's out there for you still might be a little bit intimidated by that wall. So like I said, you're on the right path, you're opening up and, and you're you're blooming, you know. But it's almost like you gotta let you gotta take the fence down around. Let someone come up and smell the flower. Because right now they can see the flower, but Mm-hmm. You know, you're not ready to have them pick it yet. You know, you're just kind of like, you know, here I am, take a look. But once you let that wall down, it will, you know, it, it'll it happen. Wow, great. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. I no, thank it. you for calling. Hey, you have a great day and it's a great show. Thank you, darling. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, thank you much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, that 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 wall is so hard to break down, you know. Folks who who've had it up for so long, it uh, it, it it's difficult. It it uh, it takes every ounce of energy to break down that wall after so many years of of building that up brick by brick, and so um, you know it it, uh, it it's something that's going to take a long time and. and I hope Sandy understands that, and, and hopefully that uh, once that wall is torn down, I, I can guarantee. I'm not I'm not a tarot reader or a psychic, but I know that once that wall is down, anything can come through, right, Lucy? Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of getting that wall down, and it all starts with that first brick. All you gotta do is take that first brick out of that wall, and the rest of it will come down. Well, we've got uh, 25 more minutes left in the show, or less, um, and the lines are open. So if there's anybody still out there that wants a mini reading from Lucy, the number is 661-244-9831. That's 661-244-9831. So, Lucy, while we're waiting for another caller to call in, why don't you tell me your thoughts on Ms. Cleo? (laughs) Miss Cleo, 
Um, pain in my I like side. I like that laugh, by the way. <laughs> no, only because you know what, Miss Cleo did more to to make tarot card readers look bad. You know, I mean, she basically. And let me find my little notes on here. And please excuse my dog. My dog was not happy with her reading. Miss uh, <laughs> Cleo. I mean, everybody Ms. remembers Miss Cleo. She's back yeah, in what? What was it? Now. The 80s? Yeah, it Hold was me now, uh, Mom. between 1997 and 2003. Her name was Yuri Del Harris, and she was better known as Miss Cleo. She was a psychic. Um, she called herself a shaman. She was the spokeswoman for uh, a psychic pay-for-call service, and that ran between 1997 and 2003. According to the Internet, she earned almost $13.5 million. And oh, my God. Used, yeah, yeah. She used a lot of aliases during the year, uh, during her career, um, but basically, it was the Psychic Readers Network, okay? Um, she was found out to be a fraud. Uh, let's see, in 2001, the Psychic Readers Network was sued in a bunch of lawsuits that were brought from Arkansas, Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Missouri, New York, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Florida. Um, the FCC and, and the FCC sued her too. Did, did you leave anybody though, out on that list? No, no. And basically, her, the, her her defense was that you know even though they had uh, lawsuits coming from all of these uh, these states, that they did have many customers that were satisfied with the service. Um, in 2002, the FCC charged her uh, and her company with deceptive advertising. Uh, deceptive billing, I guess what they were doing, they were taking people's credit cards and they were billing more than they needed to. They were double billing. Um, I, I she think actually... I, I, want, I just wanted to interrupt for a second there. I think what it was was the scam of the free three-minute uh, psychic reading. And for the mm -hmm. first three minutes it was free, as what she was claiming on um, on the commercials. And... Basically, the first three minutes were, oh, wait, hold on, let me shuffle the deck. Um, wait, hold on, let me get a pen. And, and by right. that time, at the end of the three minutes, your free, quote-unquote, free minutes were over, and now you were being charged four ninety nine a minute or whatever the charge was. And folks had called into uh, the Better Business Bureau and the FCC, basically caught wind of it, and uh, fined her, I think. And they fined her, what was it, like a million dollars or something like that? Uh, something like that. She got so she actually avoided being indicted herself, but it did cost. Uh, it did cost. I think it was something that the what you quoted there. Um, actually, she's still around. Let's see. Um, yeah, I think she's Instagram. actually still living in Florida, um, or she yeah. actually moved down to Florida and. Um, she, I think she's still doing psychic readings, and she's doing other things. I think she's like a spokesperson for some local car dealership down there, I think. Yes, she is. <laughs> yes, she is. So she's still around. But uh, honestly, I mean, she just gave every card reader a bad name. You know, like I said, when I first started doing this, I mean, I, you came across a lot of people that were skeptics, that didn't believe. And don't get me wrong, they're out there. The frauds are out there. There is, Like I said, there's going to be people out there that are going to charge you $50 to take a curse off you. Um, you can go to any street fair during the summer and you're going to run into them. You're going to run into people, um, you know, if you're going to call a, a, a psychic network line, I'm going to guarantee you, like, if they're charging you by the minute, chances are they're not for real. Um, if you really need a card reading, it's better to at least know the person that you're getting a, a reading from. Um, like I said, the clue, I think, is is that how many questions they ask you ahead of time. Like I said before, if they have anything, you know, if they know anything about body language, if they know anything about psychology, just by the questions they ask you, they're going to tell you exactly what you want to hear. If you come across someone who does it the way I do it, you know, where they don't ask any questions, chances are you're going to get a true reading. So yeah, they, they've cool. got some of those, 
there's some of those psychics out there that when they do give a reading will tell you that you've got some curse and in order to get this curse off of you you know you have to shell out hundreds thousands of dollars uh to that psychic reader or tower reader to to remove it or or get it reversed i uh that's such a shame. You know, I've heard so many stories of folks being swindled out of thousands and thousands of dollars just to get this quote-unquote curse taken off of them. And I actually was subject to to that type of scam, um, I think it was about 10, 15 years ago. And I went to a local psychic in uh, in my neighborhood in New York, and it was my first reading with this person. And after 10 minutes of getting a reading, she actually said to me that I've had this curse on me. Someone actually put this curse on me and I'm not sure if it was from an ex-girlfriend or not, um, uh, many years ago, and it's building up and it's at its peak right now. And in order to get, to get this curse taken off, I actually had to pay $50 uh, for a candle that she can only provide me, and I have to burn it every single night. I said, okay, goodbye, and I walked out the door. I, I just think that that's horrible that there's folks out there that are, are falsely portraying um, this spiritual movement of a psychic and tower readings, and, and they're giving everybody out there a bad name. Yeah, so I guess the moral, you know, and thank God you didn't fall for it, but people need to be careful. I mean, like I said, it, you know, it's one thing um, to do it and enjoy it, um, but once it moves over into the territory where people are being scammed and it becomes a fraud, it's just not good. And you know what? And there's the other thing of karma. You know, uh, these people that are doing this, eventually, like I said, I truly believe what comes around goes around. So whatever you put forth into the universe, you're going to get right back. So if these people are out there and they're perpetrating fraud, you know, it's going to come back to bite them. Of course, we saw what happened to Miss Cleo. Um, do we have time to, you know, if there's nobody on the line, I just kind of want to touch on, in case some of the listeners decided that they ever wanted to go out and buy their own deck. There's there's a couple things that I I kind of wanted to to touch on, such as like buying a deck, um, taking care of the cards, and then maybe basically what to do when you first get them. Can we can we talk well, about ahead, that? Qu- qu- quickly quickly run through it, and uh, um, I believe we have a caller on the line. But if you can keep it short, we can uh, we can get to the caller and then get on with the reading. Okay. Um, well, the first thing, like, if you decide, you know, like, after listening to us tonight, and, um, you know, like I said, Anthony gave us a lot of really good information, um, listening to the readings and stuff. If you decide that you want to buy a deck, um, there, there's like a, there's a couple superstitions in, in regards to tarot decks. First off, there's a superstition that you should never buy your own deck. And that's wrong. Yes, you can buy your own deck. Um, how do you choose a deck? Well, when you go in and you look at all of the decks that are out there, there's there's all kinds of decks from from Tarot the Cat People to the decks that we we talked about to there's even one that has images of baseball. Um, take trust your feelings. Reading cards is based on feelings. It's based on your instincts. Your deck might choose you. You know, when you go in and you take a look at it, what deck makes you feel? Um, Look at the theme. Ask you ask yourself what themes you're com- comfortable with. You know, are you comfortable with things having to do with fairy tales or with the Egyptian mythology or Greek mythology? Um, there are pagan symbols. There are Wiccan, you know, uh, themes. You know, just take a look at it, whatever you're comfortable with. If, if you see something that makes you feel comfortable, you've got to feel it. This is going to be your deck. You're going to be doing readings with it. Um the pictures. Look at the pictures. Do the pictures make you think of things? You know, um, the pictures are very important. The symbolism is one thing, but ultimately it's your deck. So look at the pictures. Once you get the cards, you know, doing doing a reading is working with energy. Um, there's going to be the energy of the person that you're going to read for. There's going to be your energy. Get to know that deck. You know, carry that deck around with you. Um, Play with it. Shuffle it. You know, get your energy on that deck. Because once you start doing readings, um, by letting the other person shuffle them, they're putting their energy on it. And like I, like we, we touched on before, reading cards, it's not really the cards that are doing it. It's going to be the energy of the person. It's going to be the reflection of what's in their situation. Finally, I think the last thing I just kind of want to um, 
touch on. There's little things that you can do, you know, make sure you keep your deck either in a, uh, traditionally you're supposed to keep it in silk, you know, uh, or you can keep it in a small wooden box. Um, but make sure that you protect your cards. You know, if you're going to do readings, a lot of times you'll see people use gloss decks to protect the cards. But it's also to to get the energy, you know, keep the energy pure. Um, every once in a while you might need to recharge the cards um, because they may not, it, it's, I like to say they don't pop, you know. A real easy way to do it is just let your card sit in sunlight or let it sit in the moonlight, uh, preferably a full moon. Or basically the simplest way to do to recharge your cards is just to actually put them back in order, you know, starting from the fool going, you know, and put them in numerical order and just it's kind of like the family getting back together. It's putting the, the pages of the book back in order. And then just let them sit for like maybe a night or two and, and you'll be ready to go again. And I think that's really about it about the tarot cards. But I'm hoping that by listening to us that maybe some of you out there will decide to go get your own dick and to start reading. And then maybe I can call you someday and get a reading from you. <laughs> that's actually good information, Lucy. Thank you. Well, we have time for one more caller. And we have a caller on the line, area code 707. I believe that's California. Hello, you are on the air. Please state your name, your location, and your question for Lucy. Uh, yes, hi, Lucy. This is Valerie from California. I would like to know about love life. Hi, Valerie. Hi. Let's see. Let's shuffle these cards off, and let's see what we got. Romance seems to be the big topic tonight. <laughs> okay, let's see. See, give it one more shuffle and let's see what they say. Okay, what's well, first card is the two of swords reversed. Second card is the Empress. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. I did it again. I start laughing before before I even tell you what's going on. Um, second card is the Empress, reversed. The last card is the Lovers. <laughs> Valerie, do you have somebody in mind already? <laughs> uh, no, I don't. The first, <laughs> okay, first first card, Two of Swords, reversed, okay? you um, Going back to a previous reading, okay? The swords that have been up in place, they're, they're, they've been lowered. They've been gone. In the past, you probably have had had the protective stance. Um, if you look at the card, the two of swords is a woman sitting there, and she's got the two swords crossed over her chest, okay? It, it is a very protective, um, nobody's going to get in here kind of picture. This card is reversed, which means those swords have kind of, it, the wall has dropped, okay? Where you're at right now is the empress, and it's reversed, though, okay? The empress is um, the woman who is in touch with her intuition, kind of like the high priestess, but this is more, um, she's in touch with being a woman, you know, uh, uh, the, how do I put this? It's reversed, so it's almost like there's still certain things that you kind of are, are, are keeping to yourself that you that you really don't want to open up, that you, it's not that you're being reclusive, but it's almost like you just, you just haven't totally opened up. The wall is down, but you need to open up even more. You need to revel in being you. You need to let yourself be yourself. You don't need to adhere to anyone else's standards. You need to adhere to your own standards. And once you do that, once you finally accept who you are and what, how you want to live your life and how you want to do it, the last card is the lovers, and that's in the future. And this, for the last reading, this is absolutely the best. The lovers is the card of romance. It is the card of passion. It is the card of um Two hearts joining as one. Yes, you are going to find romance. All you need to do is, like I said, just learn to be you, accept who you are, 
And once you do that, he is going to sweep you off your feet, whoever he is. Oh, that sounds good. It's awesome. This is, for the last reading, this is awesome. I, uh, that, that, the lover's card is, is the card of, of love. It's the card of romance. It's the card of, um, you know, it's the romance novel and the movie put together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in the tarot, do, do, is there a timing in the tarot or no? No, no, because, again, you're the one that's in control. It's it's a road map, and basically what this what this little road map is telling me is that there are certain things that you need to do for yourself. You are in control of this car. This car is going to go where you want to, and what I'm seeing here is that it can go directly to that parking lot, to the correct parking lot, but it depends on where you steer it. Okay, and basically the second card, what it's saying is that there are things within yourself that you need to, there's no outside forces, there's nothing else, it's you. There are things that within yourself that you need to be accepting of. And basically what, I, what I'm feeling, what I see, is that you need to accept yourself. You don't need, before, you, before someone else can love you, you have to love yourself. Yeah, I'm there. And that means... Okay, and like I said, so you need to come to, you know, like I said, come to a total accepting of who you are, what you are, boom. And once you've once you're done once you've done that, it's coming. I don't know how soon. I don't know, you know, where he is. I mean, you know, like if we did a longer longer reading, there probably be more cards that would maybe point to it. And actually, you know what? I'm just gonna pull one more card just to see what it is. It's the Seven of Swords. Um, Whoever this person is, is a person of action. It's a person that um, he does things rather than just speak speak about them. So if you know anybody or if, I don't know if that's the kind of person you're looking for or if it's someone you already know, but it is a person that actually does. He's he's a doer. He's not a talker. Oh, that's great, too. (laughs) This is wonderful. This is good. I like this one. Yeah. I always like it when the I always like it when the lover's card comes up. But actually no, this is really nice. Yes, there is romance. This one I will definitely say there's romance in your future. Oh great. Okay? Uh-huh. Okay. Thank, Thank you so you. much for calling. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. That was that was good, nice. I like that. I love doing this. <laughs> <laughs> nice to end on a lover's card, right? Yeah. No, that's actually good. I like that. So, okay. I, um so I I think we 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 had a great show tonight. I think um I I mean, I certainly enjoyed it. I I enjoyed listening to you give the readings. I think we were able to get out uh the, I, I guess the most important information about tarot and tarot card reading to our listeners um, so that they can sort of take that knowledge and go off and, you know, hit Google, hit the Internet, hit the library, and learn learn more about it if you want. I mean, again, like Lucy and I were saying before, there is tons of information out there, and there are tons of different variations to the origins of tarot and the tarot card itself. And so just, you know, if you're really interested in, in learning about it, Take out, take out, take up a book or, or take up a class even if you wanted to, and uh, to learn about how to do it. And Lucy, you gave some great advice on what to look for and how to, to sort of prepare and and keep your cards and and how to buy them. I think that was just awesome information to give everybody. Well, I think the main thing I want to get across is that it's not hocus pocus, and it's not anything that's a fraud. It's something that I think everybody can do. And if I've done anything um, to help people with their curiosity and you feel like you want to go buy a deck, then go do it. Go buy the deck. Go, um, you know, look look at this, look at the decks and just play with it. I mean, the more, it's just like anything else. The more you do it, the better you'll get at it. But remember, you've got to open up your mind. You've got to see. You've got to be able to feel. And that's just not with the tarot cards. That's with everything. That's with everyday life. Start getting in tune with your feelings. Start getting in tune with your hunches. Open up your mind and let everything in. 
Yeah, and tarot, tarot cards, tarot itself, and tarot cards. It's not much uh, about telling the future. It's more like 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 what we were saying before. It's giving you the tools to create the future, and it's up to you to carve it out and create the history for yourself. You're the driver, as Lucy was saying before. You're the one in control. You're the one that um, is the master of your own destiny. And so if anything that you take from this and the tarot card readings that Lucy so brilliantly gave to everybody is that, you know, all of that advice, it's not going to happen unless you make the decision. You can't just sit around and just hope and wish and pray that it happens. You have the one that has to sort of get in that car and turn the key and press your foot on the gas and go. Uh, otherwise, that car just sits there and collects dust. You, you, you have to really get into it and uh, move forward. And hopefully the information and all the advice that Lucy gave, everyone's able to sort of take in and maybe reinterpret it to your own self and your own personal life and make make a decision. If anything, if you make a different decision or if you tend to go in a different way, hopefully that's better, but at least it prompted you to sort of think about whatever the issue was that you called in for or whatever worries that you had in your mind when you were at the reading with Lucy that you were able to actually take it and make your, your own decision and create that fate and that destiny for yourself. And uh, we hope that... Uh, you do take the information, and if you can, you know, visit us on our Facebook page. We do have a Facebook page, Paranormal Review Radio. If you just go into Facebook and type Paranormal Review Radio, you'll get to our page, like us, and we'd love to hear about any of the decisions or any of the after effects of the readings that you've had, or if you have questions about tarot and tarot card reading, you can always ask Lucy or I um, on our Facebook page. And... Um, we hope to uh, to uh, see you folks on uh, uh, again. So, Lucy, do you want to talk about next week's show? Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> we actually have a, a show that's sort of it's sort of personal to both Lucy and I, and I, I, I uh, I've been dying to talk about um, this particular topic, but I'll, I'll let Lucy sort of lead you into it. Well, actually, um, we had the opportunity, um, I want to say a couple months ago, to go to Rolling Hills Asylum in New York. And personally for me, it's probably one of the best trips that I've ever had. The place is amazing. So our next show, what we'd like to do is talk about Rolling Hills, talk about the history a little bit, and talk about um, the things that have that have happened there and that are still happening there. And, Anthony, I think you have some really good um, information that you want to share, and I don't know if you want to give them a little bit of what, you know, we will talk about. Well, we will present some evidence that we've caught at Rolling Hills Asylum. I mean, um, yes, we did have an opportunity to go uh, back in September, Lucy and I, and investigate basically all night long. Um, and we've had, I think it was, I don't know, 10 hours in the place or six hours in the mm -hmm. place. But um, I was actually, that was actually my second time at Rolling Hills Asylum. And so I have... Um, evidence that I think you'll be interested to listen and actually watch. We're going to give you and share a link to um, some videos that we have of our paranormal investigation at Rolling Hills. And I think you will want to tune in to take a look at that and also hear some of the EVPs that we've got. Uh, pretty amazing. I mean, they're not just one word, EVPs. Uh, We've got um, sort of half-sentence EVPs that kind of came through, and I think everybody would be interested in that. Plus, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the investigation. We'll, we'll talk about um, um, Sharon Coyle, who is absolutely great, who owns Rolling Hills Asylum. And um, we will leave it at that. I think it'll, that'll be a little bit of a teaser. Hopefully you'll tune in next week. So, Lucy, I want to thank you for everything tonight. We've got about under a minute left in the show, so I wanted to thank you. Uh, I think what you did was absolutely awesome tonight, and we hope our listeners um, were happy with their reading and that uh, everybody was able to call in and everybody was able to get whatever information that they were hoping to get, and um, I just, I had an awesome time. I'll, I'll let you take it out, Lucy. 
You know what? I do want to thank everybody that called. Um, I hope you enjoyed your readings. Um, as always, Anthony, I want to thank you for everything that you do to put this, this radio show on. And I really hope that you guys can take something away from this. And I look forward, to, you know, we both look forward to um, seeing you next week. And we want to talk about Rolling Hills and the experiences that, that have been happening there, you know, um, share some of our personal experiences with you. And uh, as always, thank you so much, everybody, for listening. Thank you for your support. Paranormal Review Radio.